Hi guys, welcome back. Um, the last video I showed making this little vice clamp guy that came off of eBay, but because I wanted to show a lot of machining, that video is going to be very long, so I didn't show the footage I actually had of receiving this guy and opening it so you can see it close up. So. Here's the footage of just receiving it so you can kind of see what it looks like close up. I think I know what this is. It's not supposed to be here until Monday, but hopefully that's it. Yep, there it is. $8.15 off eBay. For that kind of price, I wasn't about to make it. It's a clamp for the vice. It goes on the jaws. Where's the jaw? Take one of the steel jaws out. Since I keep forgetting to drill and tap the hole, I figured I'll just get this guy and he's movable. And yeah, all right, it goes all the way through. So I'll have to change the screw out to something else. But it looks pretty nice. This finish, well, put some oil on it and it'll probably clean it up, make it look better. Pretty bad anodizing, but. $8.15, guys. I'll put a link to it uh, in the description. Actually, <laughs> you guys can't see it. And zoom way in, huh? Boom. Whoop. Zoom out a bit so it's in focus. There. That's what it looks like when you get it. Hole on that end. <laughs> it's a very nice little clamp. I put oil on it and the black just kept coming off and off all over the place. Now it's got a real nice finish and the black stopped finally. But I can clamp it any place I want, which is really cool on the stock. Or get rid of it, you know, just throw it in the drawer. Change the screw out to a stainless steel. But for $8.15, that's cool. I'm not making that thing. All right. Um, Everybody knows that I primarily focus this channel and the videos to the new guy, somebody who's just starting with the mill or the lathe, because there's just, when I started some two and a half years ago, there was nothing out there that really would help me. There's not, I still think even today, I have yet to see one video that tells you on a lathe you need to set the cutter on the center of uh, rotation. And you do it by facing something off until you wind up with a flat surface with no bumps or anything on it. But yeah, there's videos out there of guys saying, well, yeah, this knob moves the cross slide and this knob moves um, the compound. <laughs> not, a, not a great help at all. So um, even like, for instance, the last video on the clamp, I said in there that I don't know whether anybody's going to get anything out of this, but here's a half hour or so of machining, and sure enough, the emails come in. One guy wants to know where I bought the vise. Give me the brand and all that stuff. So somebody got something out of that video because they wanted the vise. They liked it. Another guy emails me and says, you have any more information on the constant force spring uh, piston upgrade and how did you mount your DROs? So people are getting stuff out of the video and I like that. That's great. But um, so for this video, you know, I've done reviews, uh, review or and what you have to do to the mill, and then another video on the lathe. And then as I progressed and learned more, I redid them again. So there's a more detailed, upgraded, so to speak, talk about the mill. And then another on the lathe, redid that one. Um, so this video, I want to just point out, I never thought about it, but I was thinking, you know, if I started all over again, what are the top ten most important things that I would do. Now in hindsight knowing. So I'm going to show um, I guess first the mill. The lighting isn't going to be that good and apologize but I just wanted to prioritize and tell 
um, what I think in order are the top ten modifications that you should do to the mill and then I'll come over to the lathe and explain what I think are the top ten mods that you need to do to the lathe to change your life so I hope it helps somebody out hmm. Our shadows, right? No. Still overcast and dreary, so I've got a giant flood on this thing. <laughs> I just realized where I've got it, I'm going to be throwing shadows. But I have my list here, and yeah, you'll see covers on. I've been covering the machines up nowadays because they're loaded with oil, and the dust gets on them, and it's a pain to try to clean them up. So, um, on the mill, the top 10 things that I did that I think were, I can't say revolutionary, um, but made a significant difference in machining, milling, whatever you want to call it. The first three items are, I can't say, you know, this is number three, this is, they're all pretty much on number one. So the first thing I did was I put the belt drive on here, the upgrade from the little machine shop. That made a big difference in the noise, which kind of who cares, but when you're machining here for hours, it does make a difference. But the real thing that it did was the plastic gears wound up chattering the end mill as you're cutting in and the finishes, as soon as I did that, the finishes changed immediately. The second thing is the pistons. I made my own. I know a little machine shop sells the upgrade. And I've got a video on that. But getting rid of that spring and using constant force pistons made a serious difference uh, as far as being able to control it when you're trying to play down at one thousandth of an inch. It, it just made a serious difference in using the machine. And the last one is the DR, not the last, the third one is adding DROs. And it's kind of amazing because you look on YouTube and every serious machine that's out there, it's got a channel, they have a DRO on it. But you go on Craigslist and they're selling mills, the big bridge ports and so on, and there's no DRO on it. So I don't understand. I don't think they're taking it off and then just selling the machine. But to me, I don't know how you can run a mill without a DRO because you'd spend your life here trying to read the dials. These locked down? Yeah. Trying to read these dials to make cuts. So that's, those are the three top ones that I'd say made a serious difference in using this mill. Um, the fourth one is a square vise. I guess everybody's seen me making the soft jaws, discovering my vise was not straight. Because if you have a jaw that's tilted like that, and this one's straight, your work isn't being held solid. Which is why, as soon as I got them all nice and squared up, all of a sudden the sounds were different, like I said. Machining's different. Gotta check your vise out. Gotta make sure you got a square vise. Make sure things aren't tilting when you clamp down. Um, I did recommend in an earlier video that this is the vise that you should get. It's not too big, it's not too small. So that's four. Number five was going to the ER32 college. Um, the stand, you know, I started originally using the chuck with end mills in it. Then I never did go to the other collet system that it comes with, and I've been asked why this, and the reason is I've got what probably 150 different sizes, um, which actually that doesn't make much of a difference for the mill, because yeah, um, end mills only come in a few different sizes or three quarter half inch, five sixteenths, blah blah blah, but you can't find the collets that go up in the spindle here for different sizes. They give you two that comes with it. Do I have them here? 
Yeah, they give you a 3 8 came with this mill and a half inch came with this mill. Now if I want a quarter inch, I can't find it because it's an MT3. Um, I don't know, I just couldn't find it to buy it. Um, so I went with the ER32s because I'll get into the lathe here. But it allows me to hold anything I want and even more so on the lathe because I can hold any size stock. Not off the shelf, but if I machine something down to size X, there's no collet that fits size X. Well, the collet system do, does. Uh, next one, which is number six, made a big difference, is the IKEA light. I still need to do something better. Never got around to it. But you just can't see. <clears throat> I've seen people with other lights. You know, that probably works. So I'm just saying, you need a light. You need something that really just lights up where you are so you can really see what you're doing, how close you are to surfaces, and so on. And I'm also in here with a magnifying glass that people have seen. So that's number six, a light. You need a light to be able to work. Um, seven, the Travers end mills. Did talk about that in the previous, end mill, or previous video. Got turned on to it by my friend, the machinist, gave me one of the end mills for aluminum, insane finishes. Uh, I've actually had people email me, give me the part number, because they went and bought them too. Uh, so, and it's so good that I went and bought the whole set. I've got quite a few, I've spent like $120 on a bunch of them. So I use them only on aluminum. I don't want to even risk touching any other kind of material with them. So. That was number seven, the most significant thing that changed machining for me. Eight, the plastic covers. What a difference, because you big mass, can't get the chips out, trying to shop vacuum out, and you got something to put things on. I mean, it just, you know, I put my cutting fluid on it while I'm doing the job. You got a nice countertop. That made a big difference in working. Uh, nine was the depth gauge. I did a whole video on making that. Here it is. So this little guy, because you can't get in here to measure depths with anything else. So this worked out. Go find a video on a depth gauge. That was uh, another big thing. And number ten is just putting the leather up here on the motor. It noise got killed. I did it because it was a lot of noise getting picked up in the camera when I was trying to tape videos for YouTube. But it it's nicer on the ears. You know, you got the belt drive quieted, and now I got a piece of leather up here, and it's not overheating, it's not bothering it at all. But the machine is nice and quiet. So if I had to pick ten things that I did to this machine that significantly changed either my life or machining or something, those would be the top 10 things I would suggest you have to do. <coughs> <coughs> Alright, bring my list over here, and again, oh, I can see I'm really casting shadows. Let me turn this light a little bit so maybe I'm not in it, and I'm still in it. Alright, top 10 things that I did to the mini lathe that significantly changed me, my life, work, whatever you want to call it. Number one was fixing this compound. When I bought this lathe, compound was a mess. I was green, had no clue about anything. And the machinist friend came over and he's rocking this going, you can't machine squat. You have to get this compound smooth and it cannot move at all. As soon as you get it smooth and broken in, then you can start getting nice finishes. That's number one on the mini lathe. Number two, vibrations. You're going to have a chuck. you got to balance it. I have videos on slugs that go in here and so on. If you can get rid of all the vibrations, your finish changes significantly. So, compound vibrations. Number three, I already said it on the mill, the ER32 system. I can't tell you how many times I've made a threaded 
threaded for a screw, I can flip it around, I'll find a collar, it fits the threads, doesn't damage them, clamp down on it. Some other part I've already machined, I gotta flip it around to machine or face the other side, I'll find a collet. I've got, I don't know, 150, so I've got every Imperial collet there is off of eBay, and I've got every metric collet there was off of eBay, and it was only a couple of hundred bucks for the collet set. I forgot what this was. There's links on the website to all of these different things. That was a big change, and I, oh, I love it. So that was number. Oops, I blew it. Number one compound, two vibrations, three the quick change tool post. Forget this. I got an order different one. Going to the quick change tool post. So easy to get heights. You've seen the actual gin win or whatever. It's on the other lathe. You're gonna play with shimming. Um, cutters and stuff. No, this is now drop it in, tighten it down, go. Change it, tighten it down, go. And a little bit of rest starting? No, just dirt. So that was number three. Do that. Four is the 3 8 set. And I've said before why. Because the 3 8 set, you can, there's all kinds of inserts that fit it. So, uh, they're just 21.51s, there's TCMTs and this and that, and so on. Uh, CCMTs, I don't know. Um, so you got a whole array of inserts to play with. Um, even LMS sells just a flat, high-speed steel insert that fits these things. So that is number four. You need to do that. Play with that stock tool holder to me is a joke. Five. Oh yeah. Okay. TCMT inserts. I bought these. I showed them in a video. For aluminum, it gives you an insane finish. Beautiful finishes. So that would be number five. What I would do, have to do, if I had to do it all over again. Six again. A light. I'm using the IKEA light here. I built a little bracket that bolts it to a spare hole in the back of the bed. But I can move it all around to wherever I want. You can use any other light. I see people with a lot of different things, but I really like this guy. It's no heat. And again, I can put it exactly where I want. So that's six, seven would be the collet system. Because uh, you can still run with the chuck, but I'd rather have a light over uh, you know an ER32. So it's hard to prioritize too all of these different things what I would do uh, again and in what order. But um, so yeah ER32 I already talked about that. Number eight tail stock alignment and I've got a video on the correct way to do it how you've got to do it because everybody I see on YouTube and stuff is doing it wrong. So go find that video and once you have the tail, you, if you don't have the tailstock lined right, you're not drilling holes nicely. You're not doing a lot of stuff correctly. So get it lined up on center and vertically and tilt in the whole bit. There's video on that. So that was eight. Nine would be getting spotting drills. I did a video on that. There's spotting and there's center drills. Center drills are specifically designed for drilling the hole for a live or dead center. They're not for center drilling for drill bit. Spotting drills are to be used for drill bits because of the angles of the spotting drill matches the angle of your drill bit, so to speak. Uh, so that's nine and ten is good boring bars. Um, I think I showed in, in um, one of the videos, Grizzly makes this really killer boring bar. The inserts were like a hundred bucks for ten, but well, well, well worth it. So if I had to do it all again, that is the top ten things that I would make sure I did because it makes a big difference on the machine. So 